All right, so what do we got? Projects. Hi. Pillage the temple, plunder the temple of the elk, and rob it of all remaining treasure. Prevents future restoration. Nope. Trade agreement with, can't even read that very well. Rebuild the temple of the elk. Restore the temple. Okay, let's check advisors first. Oh boy. All right, let's quick save before I do anything. Oh, my life is a burden. Okay, the region ensures subjects' complaints and concerns are heard by the ruler and serves as link between baron and people. Choose an advisor to fill this position. Okay. Ah. So, Octavia always strives to solve problems peacefully or follow the letter of the law. Blah, 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 blah. Octavia. Counselor deals with troubles of the common folk and helps settle land disputes and agricultural matters. The advisor ensures citizens remain loyal to the throne. Well, Tristian looks like you're uh, the volunteer. Okay, you can reappoint advisors if you want to change them up. Reappoint whoever you can at first. Gotcha. The general is the highest ranking officer in the army of the barony and is responsible for watching the borders and protecting the realm. Okay, so we can do Rigongar, Amiri, and Kassil. I like Kassil. Always strives to help those in need. And I don't really trust Amiri as a governance person, and Rigongar is... Well, angry? Treasurer! Duty is to keep the coffers of the barony full and ensure any gold spent is spent wisely. Oh, can't do anything with that. High Priest. No matter what deity he serves, the High Priest strives to satisfy the spiritual needs of all citizens in the barony. We can do Harim or John. <sighs> John does his best to solve problems without disrupting local traditions or Harim. Favors unusual but effective solutions. Harim! Now we get to have the depressing, uh, depressing man in charge of everything. Who is this guy? I don't know, but I guess I can't use them, so I guess not. All right, regions, we've got this. Claim outskirts. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna keep quick saving. I'm really not sure what I'm doing here. Uh, hello. So declare the outskirts part of the kingdom. Would cost BP. How much do I have? I get thirty-two per week. I can get some more land. But yes, depressing spiritual advisor. <laughs> well, I mean, Megalonomo uh, Megalonomia is a very realistic kingdom. It's just also... <laughs> that's like, actually, that's actually wrong. Alright, whatever. Anyway, so we could... What is this? Loyalty plus five, community plus two. Um, Might be worth it. Let's check these. Tristian's training. Sense of training and expeditions into the wilderness to improve your companion's proficiency. Increases your companion's level, making them suitable to join your current party. Oh, so this would make Tristian actually like a functional party member. Don't care. Is Vanki's offer? Is Vanki key? High priest of Rastel from Rastoy has a strong interest in spreading the stag god's faith across the region. Is eager to build a shrine dedicated to a Rastel in your lands, but at his own expense. Accept his offer if you wish to gain a useful ally and place of worship for Rastel. Okay, hell yeah. Harim, you're in charge of that. Alright. Rebuild the Temple of the Elk. Harim is busy. Alright, we'll get that after this. Making it the center of Arasal's worship in all the surrounding areas. Unlocks a special region upgrade. Prevents the pillaging of the temple. That's easy enough. Uh, I could just do this. It wouldn't cost much. Oh, ne never mind. Can't do that anyway. If you go to... Oh, if you go to claim the outskirts, it will skip time for two weeks. Maybe I don't want to do that. Trade agreement with Sertova. Our merchants will uh, re receive the right to establish a sizable trading post within the heart of New Stetvin. Each city in the barony gains an extra 5 BP per week. Plus two for each town, plus one for each village. Okay, but I don't have any advisors, so can't do that anyway. Also very expensive.
Okay, so the Lord Mayor of Restoff has offered 500 BP and financial assistance in exchange for your promise to work exclusively with Restov's Builders Guild. It's a generous offer, but who knows what consequences this would have for the barony. Okay, so we don't actually want to do that one. I thought I had already uh, locked myself into it. Well, I figured I'd go for the shrine first. And we don't want to do that one. Okay. Can I go out adventuring, or are we stuck here? Because I assume time will pass as I wander around the world, right? Or is, like, Harim uh, not the party will that happens? Destroying the Phylacrity won't kill the Lich immediately, but it's necessary to defeat the monster. Oh, good! We're going to have to fight Liches in this game. I'm actually pretty jazzed about that idea, but... Uh... Okay, so you can adventure to pass to the time. Cool, because we want to go grab all of those resources that we've seen. Hi. We've got a secondary bar for all of my abilities. Neat. <sighs> okay, they do join you. Good. I was a little bit worried that having them as my advisors... Um... <gasps> my life is a burden. Uh, I was a little bit worried that setting people as advisors would actually uh, mess things up a little bit. Okay, so... Dear time stop, of course. The old guy is the one you sell all the trinkets to, like the token of the dryads and coins and whatnot. Oh, good to know. Alright, well, let's level a couple of party members up as, uh... as we are going to be out adventuring with them. Okay, so we wanted to get him... Shield Wall. That'll get him some a AC. We should probably check his spell book at some point. Uh, because I bet he has some new slots. Yes! Level 3. So, Rage. That's a level 3 spell? Really? I'm gonna grab Dispel Magic. That seems mildly useful, maybe. Archon's Aura. Powerful Aura. Will resist. Minus two penalty on attack roll savings throw. Huh. That's interesting, and it's not immediately amazingly helpful. Extra AC per four caster levels. That's kind of helpful. We could do stuff like animate dead. Summon monster. Remove curse, blindness, cure. Yeah, summon monster 3 is good for meat shields. Yeah. I don't know if we need it that much, though. Let's grab magical vestiment, because that's going to last a while. Actually, let's grab two of them. Because if that lasts for hours, I can cast that at the beginning of every... Uh, every adventure. I guess that's not actually that amazing. It's kind of helpful. Linus is pretty good if it lands. Ooh. Okay, blindness. That's rough. <laughs> that's real good. Prayer is also great. It doesn't last for long, though, which is tough. I guess we'll do one blindness, one prayer. Lindsay. Okay, just going to keep her down the bard path. No new stat points, obviously. Okay, so now she can get precise shots, so she stops missing. Took me long enough to get there. Alright, so new one. I can give her blindness as well. Everyone goes blind. Hey, who else to level up? I'm not going to bother with some of the characters I don't bring around that often. Just because. Uh, should be obvious reasons. Ooh, improved uncanny, uncanny dodge. Helpful. I'll mess with them later if I actually feel like it. I don't know if uh, leveling the characters up actually changes how they 
they function. Uh, let's see. Armored focus, kind of helpful. Combat reflexes, eh, it's kind of... Ooh. A wielding weapon in which you have weapon focus. You can perform a bewildering show of prowess as a full round action. Huh. Demoralize all foes. Okay, so I'll have to give that to the other lady. I could give her dodge. Just plus one AC. That's not a bad idea. I could look into like power attack and cleave, but eh. Yeah, it might just be a good idea to get her dodge at this point. Okay, you want to level those who are advisors at the four eight marks so you can boost the associated stat for the advisory role. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, I don't think... I don't think I have any of those characters actually set as advisors now that I'm looking at it. Because it's Regongar and Jathal. And there's also Tristian, who I will need to level up. Uh, so we'll need to do the training on him. So we should probably actually queue that up before we go out on any adventures. We can just have Octavia handle it. Okay. So Arcane Trickster requires second level spells. So we'll have to be one more level before... Two more? Two more? Nah. Oh, wizard it is. And she still gets... Oh, interesting, because she's multi-class, I guess it still counts. Everything is a class skill. Well, we don't need uh, Knowledge Arcana past this point. Or Persuasion. Outflank is stupid good if you have three or more characters with it. Good to know. I guess I'll uh, look into investing in that later. The accomplished sneak attacker. Extra sneak attack damage. That's probably going to be what I want to do. Because that'll give her a 3 die 6. The other thing I could look into is martial weapons proficiency. So she could use some of the better bows. Later though, especially because she's going to be sneaking attack, uh, sneak attacking with uh, other stuff. Okay, so she's already got these. Oh boy, I forgot wizards are kind of wild. So what do I not have? What is this? Non-recommended feature. Oh, I see if it's gray. Well, let's grab reduce person. That sounds fun. Uh, let's see. Stuff like sleep and hypnotism aren't going to work so great. I don't think Stone Fist is very good. I guess we'll grab Burning Hands just because it kind of scales. Yeah, so I might uh I might pull up a, a character editor and whatever and actually make Octavia. Eh, no, I think we'll be fine. I was, I was considering min-maxing it, so she's only rogue one. But I think it. I think this is fine. Okay. She only has two points. I have no idea what I've been investing in. Probably not athletics. So let's just do those two. Okay, so we've already got weapon focus. We have not done armor focus on heavy armor yet. Nope, we have. Alright, she's already got that. Die hard, endurance. Don't need those. We could do missile shield. We could go for outflank. Whenever you and an ally who has this feat, your bonus on attack rolls incre increases to plus four. Oh, in addition, whenever you score a crit against a flanked creature, it provokes an attack of opportunity from your ally. It's, it's not actually amaz amazingly common. But still helpful. Okay, we do also have shield bash, but I don't really know if that's going to be that helpful. I guess, yeah, let's just get our missile shield. Blocking one ranged attack per round, probably. 
So I straight up don't know if there's anything else immediately on her. I mean, I, I could go for outflank. Let's just get her outflank, because that's going to be more immediately useful, because then I can give it to a, a Miri whenever... on the next level, actually. And... a Reem if I wanted to. Okay. Speaking of summoning, apparently the devs didn't account for enemies fighting summon swarms, so they ended up being pretty powerful. Huh. That is actually... that's handy to know. I don't know if I'm going to immediately use it, but still. Okay, so we want to do Tristian's training. Uh, we'll just have Octavia handle it. Because that way he'll be a better advisor. Okay. Now let's go adventuring. We want to get all those resources first. That's the most important thing. Uh, question. All that stuff I left in the in Oleg's inn, did it get moved down here or do I have to go grab it? Because uh, we should probably go grab that stuff and then find the old man to sell everything to. Somebody said it was an, there was an old man. I have no idea which old man. Or is it that, that weird old man that wanted the berries? Oh, it, it all got moved down? Oh, it did. Sweet. All right. Because, yeah, we need to get an antiques expert. Hello. When the wielder assumes the aspect of the falcon, they gain a plus three com competence bonus on skill check, uh, perception skill checks. Extra competence on attack rolls with ranged weapons. Critical multiplier for their bows and crossbows. What? Oh, aspect of the falcon, three days. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Old man's in the throne room near the door. Cool. I'm just going to grab all of these. I'm not entirely sure which ones are going to be helpful or not, but... Uh, I'm just going to grab a lot of them. We do also have the Cobalt's Relic. Which I'm curious about. Okay, so that should be everything. You'll want to give him everything. Alright. Is it the storyteller? I'm assuming it's the storyteller. He looks old, he also looks like... Oh, he's an elf. My life is a burden. The man standing before you resembles an elf, but a very old one. His face is wrinkled and his white beard falls to his waist. I am not sure if that portrait is accurate. The man seems to be completely blind. The old man stares past you with unseeing eyes. He seems to be consumed in his thoughts. He mutters a soft melody, swaying back and forth slightly to its rhythm. The man shudders briefly but and stops singing. His mouth opens and closes a few times, bringing to mind a fish brought ashore. Ah, who's there? Is that you, your grace? Who are you? I'm an elf from Kionin. My name is not important. I am the storyteller. I collect stories. I collect unknown legends of ancient times. The man smiles, but it doesn't seem to be directed towards you. Long ago, I was a smith in Kionin. The fire of the forge has burned out of my, burnt out my eyes, but I'm grateful for it. If I could see, I would yet forge suits of armor for Yadra's, Yadara's guards. Instead, I have stepped on the path of an adventurer and a gatherer of ancient legends. The old man ponders silently for a moment. Many people are long dead. Their homes crumbled to dust. Their bodies turned to ash. The only, only legends can still tell us of their triumphs and defeats, their joys and fears. I would be so interested to hear the stories told about us after our demise. I have always been drawn to the Stolen Lands, where, the count where countless expeditions, armies, and even kingdoms have met their untimely end. When I learned of a new barony being founded in the heart of these lands, I knew I wanted to be part of its story, so I made my journey here. Are you really an elf? Do other elves age like you have? A common question, despite my unusual el looks, I am an elf, and am, uh, and an old one, yes, perhaps older than any elf in Kionin. However, I doubt my age alone is responsible for my appearance. I keep the stories of many people and races, some forever gone from the face of Galarian, but they live on in my memory and my heart. 
When I accept a new story, I lock it within myself, bearing the weight of its words and emotions they invoke. I sometimes think I should probably have died long ago, but some incomprehensible force is keeping me alive and granting me the ability to continue my quest to gather stories. Be it divine power or fell curse, I'm grateful either way. How could you tell it was me? The old man smiles slightly. It's not so hard to recognize a ruler by the way he walks. Not in here steps as... No one in here steps as confidently as you, your grace. All right, would you care to trade stories with me? The man's voice rustles like autumn leaves. I'm a collector, not a trader. If I share a story with you, you receive the power to pass it further, changing or embellishing it, whether willingly or not. Can I be certain you will keep my stories intact in their absolute purity? The storyteller ponders for several moments. No, I don't think so. At least, not yet. These legends are, most precious, are the most precious valuables of this world, and the last remnants of ancient tribes. They are beacons illuminating the way to the past, allowing us to meet generations long and gone. I cannot let their light fade. The path to the past must not be lost. The old man thinks for a moment, then continues. But I can offer you a deal, your grace. If you find some items belonging to Era's past, bring them to me. If I recognize the stories hidden in those items, I will gladly share them with you. And if you find all the pieces of any ancient artifacts, I can recall my smithing skills to unite them and restore their power. I found the shards of an ancient artifact. Can you restore it for me at the anvil? May I? The storyteller gently touches the items from your pack. This scorched piece of metal is part of a curious artifact known as the Necklace of Double Crosses. Inside it, I sense a story of many deeds. Not heroic, but low and maleficent. If you find all of its fragments, I'll be able to restore the artifact and recount its a glorious story. I've brought some relics. Are any worthy of a story? The storyteller's eyebrows raise. How interesting, may I, your grace? He gently touches the items in your pack. A coin from a non-existent country. When Coral the Con Conqueror mastered Roslyn, having claimed it for Bravoy, he prohibited the is issuance of and use of such coins. Both ordinary folk and the Aldori sword lords were required to use new coins decorated with Coral's profile. But no one was quick to get rid of these prohibited coins. Oh no, in many houses they still store boxes and whole chests of such coins waiting for the day when Rosslyn declares its independence. Storyteller's fingers caress the symbol, shaped like a tree leaf. And what's this? I hear the voices of trees. Smell the scent of fresh leaves. A dryad's mark, is it not? I'd be happy to purchase it from you. Storyteller idly toys with the ancient plain-looking coin. What in the name of Kalarian ruler? What was the name of the Kalarian ruler who issued this coin? Does anyone remember now? What did the Cyclopses use? Use it to purchase food, books, weapons, perhaps someone's life or their freedom. Who can say? Its story was erased by the Earthfall. But I will buy it from you for significantly more than it was worth in its own time. Earthfall. Earthfall is the name of the cataclysmic event when a swarm of meteorites impacted on Galarian, negative 5,293 AR, resulted in the destruction of the human empires of Thessilion, uh, Thessilion and Aslant, which were consumed by earthquakes and massive tidal waves, and the creation of the Inner Sea. The cloud of dust thrown up by Earthfall's impact settled in on Galarian, Galarian's upper atmosphere and blotted out the sun for a thousand years, creating the Age of Darkness. Storyteller weighs the soldier's tag in his palm. A soldier does not ask where the banners of the war are headed. He or she goes into battle, dies, and leaves it to others to decide whether the cause was just. This tag belonged to one of the many warriors who helped establish the glory of the Taldene Empire. If you would permit me, I would gladly purchase it from you. This guy is loaded! Ah, the belongings of brave heroes who perform the feats here before you. I sense you would be interested to hear their story. These lands took many lives and spawned many legends. I can now tell you of a distant expedition undertaken by a group of Brefic heroes to, the, to a place known as the Drowned Trees. I'd be happy to trade the whole set of items for their story. Can you hear it calling to us? Let us hurry. Tell me about the Drowned Trees. Oh, my voice. I hear rowlocks creaking, river water splashing, 
Bushes rustling and arrows singing through the air. I feel an invincible will, a cold resolution to finish what's been started, no matter the cost. My chain armor clings to my body, and my young hands grip a sword tightly. I am the leader of a group of brave souls set off to the Stolen Lands to clear them from bandits once and for all. We sail on a freight boat. It serves as a bait for the bandits, who keep throwing themselves at it, only to find death. A death as inglorious as the life they lived. From time to time, we manage to capture a prisoner. While our Inquisitor talks to them, I go to the stern, shutting my ears to their cries. I remember, uh, remind myself that these are scum, drenched in blood to the elbow. I think upon our cause, freedom from my homeland, an independent Rossland. But still, my goosebumps rise with each beautiful cry. I must steel myself and be strong. Who is in your group? A paladin, a ranger, a sorceress, a priest, an inquisitor, and me, a fighter. All experienced combatants. Over and over, we saved each other's lives in times of need. Why do you question the prisoners? The bandits attacking our boat are small fry. We're, we're looking for their main lair, a place known as the Drowned Trees. We seek the leader of the bandits, an underwater monster named Darget Droon, and we will not leave without his head. Have there always been so many bandits in the Stolen Lands? This land swarms with them. We meet them more often than common merchants, you see. We started a rumor that the Ardori Sword Lords are using this boat to sneak treasures out of the country. Now half the gangs in the area are hunting us. Please continue. At night, it seems the whole army is attacking our boat. Far too many for us to fend off, but luckily we don't have to. While they battle monsters we've summoned in pitch black magical darkness, we drink the potions we've prepared and dive under the water. The scum break into the hold, but instead of treasure, they find their final surprise. The work of a restific alchemist, a trap. A dozen barrels of highly explosive oils. We watch from a safe distance as the boat is blown to pieces in a def deafening explosion. Everything has gone according to plan. The more who die here, the fewer who will meet in the drowned trees. We march through the forest, then camp to regain our strength. The nest is close. Our Inquisitor discovered everything. Given the location of their secret entrance, today we rest. Tomorrow, the Bandit King will draw his final breath. Whew. Even if you sneak into the Bandit camp unseen, how will you handle all of them? Each of us is worth two dozen in battle. Besides, we're all well prepared. Chaos, confusion, and summon monsters on our side. And fire. Lots of fire. What kind of secret entrance? An underwater path. Winding along the swamp bottom, we had had potions to breathe freely underwater. We couldn't see beyond our outstretched arms in the muddy water, and there were plenty of traps along the way, but the Inquisitor learned all the signs that marked the safe passage. At least we believe she did. We trudged through muddy waters. Suddenly, a giant log, studded with blades, falls from above. I managed to stagger back, but the paladin who walked alongside me is now a gory sight, spread thin across the ground. The next moment, a monstrous creature emerges from the darkness, a twisted cross between fish and monkey. Claude Hand reaches out, effortlessly melting away the Inquisitor's flesh, and then ripping out her heart. This is the King of Bandits, Darker Troon. The bandit we captured did not lie, but the secret passage he spoke of led right into the underwater lair of his master. I bury my terror deep in my soul. There is no time for weakness. There is only four of us left, and we are gasping for air by the time the... Freak's lifeblood stains the water. We leave the beheaded body on dry land, then retreat and recover. Only now I allow my hands to tremble, my breath to race unbidden, my tears to flow. What kind of monster was this Darget Droon? They say he was once a normal human, but he offended a powerful fae. She cursed him, turning him into a monster. But one he bestow but one bestowed with the ability to breathe underwater and melt human flesh with his touch. With these powers, he became the Bandit King. Do you find anything useful in Darget's lair? Oh yes, the Bandit King was a true collector of magical items. We lost two of our friends, but what we found there would help us finish what we started. So the Bandit wanted to set you up, but he played right into your hands. You could say so. Darget Droon didn't expect an armed party to appear before him, but we were too, we too were unprepared for the encounter. The Bandit's lie cost both sides dearly. Please continue. The next night, we returned the same way. We swam up to the surface and quietly gather our bearings. Above us loom the drowned trees. 
Enormous dead trunks emerging from the water, bridges crisscrossing their branches. The air is filled with the sounds of battle. Having lost their king, the bandits now battle with each other for power. And we are ready to join the fight. We leave at dawn. Behind us, smoke rises up into the sky. The bandit nest smolders and blazes. Only two of us remain, the priest and I. We've won, but the victory tastes like ash. Cinders and swamp ooze. I ask him, Tell me, Izvanki, was it worth it? He puts his hand on my shoulder and says, Yes, Jamanti. Now the stolen lands will be ours. I wish I believed him. The storyteller heaves a sigh, runs his hand over his face, and rubs his temples. Thus, the expedition to the drowned trees came to an end. I must admit, it was no easy feeling for me to stand in the place of this daring woman. The steel of her soul was colder than ice. Wait, is that the story of Jamandi Eldori, but she's still alive? Some people become legends in their own lifetime. Jamandi has performed many glorious feats, and there may be yet more ahead. If Jamandi once cleared the Stolen Lands of Bandits, why was why must me bleh, why must we do it all over again? The death of Dark Adrun and the destruction of the drowned trees weakened the bandits, but not for long. The paladin who died was a noble. It was he who was supposed to claim the stolen lands and send his troops. While well, Jamandi sought another candidate, or a priest capable of performing a resurrection ritual, a new bandit leader emerged in the in the destroyed fortress on the banks of the Tuskwater. Within the year, the stolen lands were swarming with gangs once more. Thank you for your stories, storyteller. Okay. Uh Your stories are amazing. You make it sound as though you're actually there in the moment. The storyteller nods. I gained this gift after I lost my eyes. When I touch relics, I can feel the thoughts and emotions of those who previously owned them. If the emotions are strong enough, I can even see the events that left those impressions. I need a wise advisor at my court. Would you like to serve me in matters of state? The storyteller's voice goes soft. Thank you for your words. I am unlikely to be able to imper interpret the intricacies of the political world or the affairs of the treasury, but my advice regarding the magic of the magic of the arts would be useful to any ruler. Okay, do we have any other shards? Okay, so we've got the necklace of double crosses, but we're not done yet. All right, and till we meet again. Whoa, that was a that was a lot. Okay, so he's a magic advisor. If I want to use him. I don't know if I can assign one yet, though. And don't forget to start building your first town before set setting out. Can I do that from... I assume I do that from here. Oh, boy. That was some dialogue. That was like almost half an hour of dialogue. How do we... Okay. So, is Vanky key? Oh, the guy in the robes was the priest from the story. So, projects. We're working on that. Regions. Yeah, because claim outskirts, unless that's the start the town thing. And just click on your town and press enter. This one? Oh. Enter. Tuskdale. Nope. Okay, so this is my town. And you click on your town to build it. I assume it's I assume it's this one. You may construct buildings to increase your barony stats. Each building has a cost in BP and a construction time. You may construct several buildings simultaneously. To start construction, select a building you need from the list on the right side of the screen. And place an empty slot on the settlement. Buildings may provide special bonuses if you meet certain conditions. Most commonly, two buildings must stand close together to grant bo bonuses. Make sure you use this feature to your full benefit when planning a settlement. Some buildings can be placed only in designated spots or areas. As examples, a pier must be placed on water, and a mill must be built with no other buildings around it. Demolish a building, get rid of it, and recover half the resources you spend on construction. If you want to move a building, you'll have to demolish the old one, gaining half the resources you spent on it, and construct it in the new desired slot for half the price. You won't have to spend any extra BP, but you will have to wait for construction to finish it in the new location. Okay, so what can we build? Barracks. Extra stability. Let's check stats. So, community is 10. Loyalty, 15. So we probably need military economy relations. We definitely need relations. A little arcane and whatnot. 
Okay, so what are half these stats? Can I just keep that out? So we need the handshake. We need a lot of things. So what do we do? Affects Artisan Shop, Artisan Studio, Workshop, Barracks, Citadel, Garrison. So Longhouse can also be upgraded to a, to a Town Hall. So this is actually one of the main things we probably want to build. It's a lot of adjacencies. We'll start with that. Because it gives an adjacency bonus to pretty much freaking everything. Uh, let's see. So we have a Longhouse. Wooden Wall, Granary, Barracks. What about Brewery? No, but we could use an inn, but I don't have one of those. Stability is important if it goes to zero bye-bye country. Okay. So let's kind of work on that. Um, so plus one loyalty when located in a settlement with a windmill, and plus one to st stability when located in a settlement with a tavern, but they don't need to be next to it. Okay. Well, let's try and go for the things that have those adjacency bonuses. So artisan stuff, barracks, citadel, garrison. Well, we can get a barracks. Okay, so the windmill can't have anything next to it. That's fine. Piers. Can be upgraded to a marina. Okay, ah, in. So, Grand Temple, in. So the tavern can be upgraded into an inn. If I remember right, that means we probably want to get a brewery next to it. Well, it doesn't need to be next to it. So as long as I have a brewery in the area. Okay, what else do we have? Shrine can be converted into a temple. Garrison. Smithy and a lumber yard. Yeah, seems like a good idea. I'm just trying to figure out which ones of these can be upgraded into things. So that's 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 how we get the garrison. Trade shop, temple, boundary, in. I'm just trying to think of... Um, to unlock a new advisor, you need to get loyalty, community, and military and divine up to 60. Unlock their sub-advisor. Warden or military? Okay. I'm just trying to figure out which of these have the best adjacency bonuses that I need to pay attention to. So, shop. Shop and trade shop next to the tavern is good. Barracks affects... Wall, school, stone wall. Well, I don't think we have a school yet. But I don't think we can make those, one of those. Dance hall. Restricted to baronies with a chaotic alignment. Interesting. That's cool. Well, we want a shop at the very least. And a temple. Or a shrine. Now there was the one mission to get me a shrine somewhere, but I have no idea how that works. Plus one economy when near the shop. Oh. That might be the smithy? Because I'd like to get the smithy next to the... I'd like to get the smithy next to the shop. But this has a lot of adjacency bonuses that I probably shouldn't... ignore. What else does this have? Well, I could always just get the brewery right here. And yeah, you're right. I will get I will get more as we go along. I'm going to 
Okay, what's this effect? Magic shop, library, and also a school. Yeah, we'll probably want to move these things around. Hopefully BP isn't like a serious limit limitation. But then again, it's also pretty cheap. Uh, let's screw it. Let's just get it right there. Okay, so I can't build a watchtower in any of these locations yet. We do have, like, wooden walls? Oh. Lumberyard, longhouse, herbalist house. Oh. Okay, as long as you have money, BP is an issue. It costs 80 GP for one BP. Oh, God. Well, then I'm wealthy in BP. Holy crap. Because, yeah, I've got like 20-something. No, I might have 30,000 gold. How much BP is that? 